Oh, you want the cream cheese recipe? Just a sec. Like, cream cheese alfredo is super, super simple. It's not real alfredo. It's close enough and really tasty. Okay, um... I'm gonna bring up Notepad and just put it on screen. We have a little bit before it's supposed to start, so if y'all want to, you can screenshot a recipe. Let's see here. Add a window for a... Window capture. And we'll just move it over here where y'all can see it. I mean, I guess we could, but that's what they get for not being here. How's that for... <laughs> if y'all don't want to show up, you don't get an Alfredo recipe. Okay, seriously, this is really simple. Like, I'm not even joking. It's... One package of cream cheese. There has to be a way to, like, make this not awful and hard to read. There we go! Okay. Now it's not terrible bad. So, one package of cream cheese, right? I'm gonna be honest, I cheat on this, and I usually use, like, four, because I really like garlic. Look, I just- I put in enough parmesan. I don't measure this shit, okay? And feta. Like, more parmesan than feta, but add the feta. The feta really, really kicks it up a notch. Anyway, some ground black pepper. And then, these are based on what you like. Um, if you want a sweeter... Um, it's a goat cheese. So, it's slightly sour tasting. It's very good. It's, it's actually one of our favorite cheeses. Okay, so there's your options, because, again, a lot of the time we don't cook directly from recipe, so we're going, what do we put into stuff? This is super simple, right? Then, when it starts to soften... Basically, yeah, that's totally fair. Like, it's a fun sauce to make from scratch. This is just very simple. Um, so basically what you do is you put in the cream cheese, you have the heat on low. The cream cheese starts to soften. You turn up the heat and you start pouring in the milk very slowly 
while the uh, cream cheese is softening so that you're whipping the... Stop bugging the cat. That was trouble yelping because he went to annoy Diz while she was on top of her litter box. And she bapped him in the nose. Uh, anyway. He's been doing that a lot today. I think he's just bored. And she's not actually clawing him. She just surprises the hell out of him. Because she'll sit there and sit there and sit there. And then he'll do something and she'll reach out and just smack him. Anyway, um, so you're stirring in the you're stirring the cream cheese into the milk. Uh, as you do that, you're slowly adding the milk. You're going to let it bring up to where it's just barely below a boil. If it starts boiling, turn down the heat slightly. You actually don't want to boil anything for this recipe. You want it a light simmer. So slight bubbling. Um, our Sheba and our cat, yeah, our puppy and our cat. But once it's to that point and you've got the cream cheese mixed in, remember, don't let it actually boil. Once it's at that, give it a second while you're still stirring it. Then go ahead and add in your Parmesan. Same thing, you keep stirring it and letting it melt in. Once that's in, you can turn up the heat very slightly. You still don't want it to boil. Boiling is death to a good bechamel style sauce. Just going to say it now. Anyway. Once you've got that, you pull it off the heat and you toss in all the feta and you stir it in. You pull it off the heat while you're doing this because you don't want any chance of the feta hitting it when it's actually a, a very high temperature. You want it to cool down slightly while you're tossing in the feta. So you toss in the feta, you return it to heat on low. Once the feta is blended in, it's going to be a little bit chunky at first. That's normal. You're not fucking up. I promise. Let that go for a second. Go ahead and toss in your pepper and whatever other spices you wanted to use. And then you basically just let it simmer down to the thickness you want. A quick note, it's going to get thicker when it cools. So you actually want to go ahead and just let it simmer down to where it's just thinner than you want. But it's kind of a trial and error thing. You get used to it, right? I did not type most of that up. Mostly because I didn't think about it, because like, I don't use recipes for this most of the time. I'm typing off the window while I try and do this. I am not bright. There we go. I guess I should just put stir in. So the other trick with this, if you really want to make it like work really well, is cook your pasta ahead of time. And then if you make the sauce the right amount for your pasta, obviously you'd have to divide down the recipe for however much sauce you want. And it makes probably, for me, about two thirds of what, it, of what the amount from those ingredients would be. I let it simmer down about a third usually. But if you cook the pasta ahead of time, then whenever you get to this point, 
I forgot to say butter. Tossing cream cheese and butter. There. Done. And it, they asked how to make cream cheese Alfredo. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so then you like, you have your pasta cooked al dente or just before al dente, depending on your preferences. Go ahead and just toss that in the pot with the pasta. Don't fully drain the pasta. Let it be a little bit damp. That way it doesn't actually like ruin your sauce. You'll burn off that extra moisture while you're mixing it. Then just mix it real quick in the pan on low, then turn off the pan, then toss it on some plates, and you're done. And that's, you know, a really unhealthy but pretty tasty Alfredo dinner. Obviously, if you want to do chicken, add chicken. Chicken is very good. Um, the other thing we used to do is make pizza crust. So we'd make a pizza crust. I guess you could buy one. But whatever, get a pizza crust. You make the same thing, but you simmer it down thicker. And then you use that as your uh, base instead of the tomato sauce on your pizza. And then we'd wilt some spinach into it and actually whip that into the sauce a little bit for the second layer of the sauce. And we did chicken and pineapple. It's very good. Very good. <laughs> 